Hello, my name's Rob and welcome to Swift Slots. Now, in many of my historical videos, you'll have seen that I paint an awful lot of 30 second scale slot car bodies and I've always had a problem with holding the bodies while I'm spraying them. And I've circumnavigated that here and there and I've managed to make it work, but never 100% satisfactorily. Now, I am aware that there are a few products out there that you can buy, namely by Tamiar and some other 3D printed companies that actually hold your body for spraying and for some reason or another I've not really gone with them. The 3D printed ones I'm not so sure about and the Tamiya ones like £20 so it's, it's a bit of money and I'm only using it occasionally up until this point but going forwards I've got lots of bodies to paint for me personally, for the channel and professionally and winging it just isn't an option. Now the other day I was trying to think of a way of holding my bodies in a way that I'm comfortable with so that I can get up into all the nooks and crannies underneath the body. I can hold it, I can manipulate it, I can put it down securely, I can do all those things but I don't really want to pay a lot for it. So on the internet last night, literally last night, I had a little bit of a look at what's available on the market and some Google images and so on. And then suddenly, like that, I suddenly saw my vision. And it was a free vision for nothing. And here it is. I'm absolutely over the moon with what I've created here. And I had to make a quick video to show you guys because I really think this would help all of you that want to paint slot car bodies but you can't think of a way of holding them or like I was struggling. So here is my little creation. And look, it's 100% solid. Even in 24th scale, 100% solid. You can get to all the nooks and crannies underneath, whatever, and when you're finished, plonk it down and it's done. I'm really happy with the way that these have worked out and that I made them for nothing. They literally was using scraps. There's a bit of uh, metal wire here, which could be a coat hanger. This is actually stainless steel uh, brazing wire, I think it is. It's uh, 2.4 mil. But it, that's just what I had. But you could use a coat hanger metal. And it's just scrap plywood and two screws. That's it. They literally cost me nothing but half an hour of my time. And they work absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how I built mine. Now I built mine on a bandsaw. But you can use hand tools. Whatever. They're not difficult to make. They're unbelievably easy. So what I did is I, as I built these I quickly took photographs as I went. So I'm going to show you each photograph and I'll talk over the photograph and tell you exactly what I was doing at that moment. And then with any luck, if you fancy making one of these yourself, you can make one with just very, very basic hand tools. And you'll end up having a stand to hold your bodies for nothing and absolutely rock solid. And there's very little pressure on that so that you're not straining the body in the slices and they're completely adjustable absolutely adjustable so this is a 24th scale Carrera body which is quite big and heavy and this is a very very light Revo slot body in 32 so as you can see they're absolutely fantastic so let's get on I'll show you all these pictures and talk you through it and hopefully this will be of use to somebody out there wanting to paint bodies and couldn't find a way to hold them effectively so let's crack on and show you these pictures so let's get started Grab yourself a piece of scrap wood. In my case, it was a piece of 9 mil ply or 3.8. You can use a piece of half inch ply or 12 mil, 18 mil at three quarters if you want a really substantial base. But remember, whatever you put on the base is going to be reflected in the weight of the base. So you might want a heavier base or lighter base. So choose your wood accordingly. I've used ply, but you can use ordinary softwood. Makes no difference. Then what you want to do is chop it up. Now in my case I've used four pieces because I want two stands but you only need two pieces. And the pieces that I chopped up were two inches wide or 50 mil and about five inches long or 120 mil. That seems to be about right. It seems to work well. Then once you've got all the pieces cut up you want to sand off all the edges. Now remember that you're going to be handling this so you're going to be having your fingers all over it. So you want it nice and smooth and tactile. Then create a groove in the wood, approximately an inch in from either end or 25 mil. And you want to, that groove wants to be wide enough and deep enough so that the piece of wire that you've chosen sinks completely into the wood so it's flush with the top of the wood. And in my case, the wire that I used was a piece of 2.4 mil stainless steel brazing wire, but it could be 
any wire that's uh, pliable so it could be an old coat hanger or anything like that you don't want anything too heavy because you still need to bend it and it still needs to have a certain amount of spring to it so you don't want anything too sturdy but then you don't want anything too light either so eighth inch or slightly less than that 3.2 mil 2.4 mil somewhere around there is perfect I wouldn't use brass because it's a little bit soft so you really want to use it out of steel because it gives a little bit more spring so once you've created your groove and you're happy that the wire sinks in nicely you want to mark out four points where you can drill the holes to take the wire in the middle of that groove now in my case I've given it about 10 mil or two eight, a three eighth spacing that's about right but you do need to leave a gap between the two holes that you drill then drill the four holes or two holes per groove that's big enough to take the wire doesn't have to be super accurate but the tighter the better even slightly undersized will be absolutely fine then get your wire and chop it up into four even lengths per stand so I've got eight pieces here because I was making two stands but you only need four and in my case I cut it up into seven and a half inch lengths then on one end you want to grind a point wants to be fairly sharp but you don't have to go to the end of the world to try and make it super sharp it just needs to have a nice point so that when it's pushing against the body it just nips the body nicely you don't want to be piercing anything but then you want it to have a certain amount of point to it so it just grips then on the other end you just need to grind the ends nice and flat and smooth and take off the sharp corner on the end that you ground nice and square you want to put a 90 degree bend in it about five mil long so that when you push it into the hole that you've just drilled in your groove the bottom of the wire doesn't come out the bottom of the wood now you want to put this wire in a vise and you want to pound that corner nice and square so it's as sharp as and as a right angle as you can possibly get because it's got to go in that hole and then sink down level with the wood so if it's a nice smooth radius put on with just a simple pair of pliers you're going to really struggle to get that radius to go tight into the wood so you want to put it in your vise and you want to pound it with a hammer so it's nice and sharp the bend then test fit your piece of wood into the groove and as you can see from the flat bit above my bend I have hit it with a hammer and it's flattened the wire out at that point doesn't make a difference that's actually better so test fit it into the groove and into the hole and make sure that it all snugs down nicely the top of the wire comes level with the wood and the bottom of the wire doesn't poke out the bottom of your piece of wood once you've got to that stage line up all of your pieces of wire with the short bend in it and draw a line across it about 25 mil to 30 mil away from the bend you, what you want to do is you want to clear your piece of wood with about half an inch or 12 mil to spare then bend the wire at 90 degrees at that point opposite to the short bend and again now you can put on a gentle bend if you want to that's absolutely fine it doesn't matter for this particular bend then on the pointed end you want to do almost the same now this is the bit that's going to go up into a body so you don't want that bend to be too long but you do want it so that the bend keeps away from the side of the car so in my case I've done it about 20 mil or about three quarters of an inch that will give me plenty of clearance for the wire from the side of the body then simply bend 90 degrees at that mark opposite to the larger bend you've just created and you should end up with something looking just like this then you want to put the four pieces of wire into your piece of wood into the groove and tap it all home so the top of the wire is flush with the piece of wood and everything is all snugged up nicely then using the glue of your choice you want to flood the work with some glue I've used super glue here but you could easily use woodworking glue I think super glue might be better because it would probably grip the steel a little bit better but any glue that you're comfortable with use that then put your second piece of wood on top and with a pair of cramps cramp it together so that the glue is nicely compressed and everything is sandwiched up nice and tight then between the two pieces of wire still in the groove area drill the pilot hole through the wood and out the other side and then countersink it once you've done that you can then drive a woodworking screw all the way through the wood and in my opinion I would allow it to come out the back side and then trim it off with an angle grinder afterwards because that ensures that you've got maximum thread going all the way through the wood and it supports the wood 100 percent 
Then like I say, just grind off the excess on the underside so it's nice and smooth to the touch. Then you'll need to set up your wires to a more accurate position. So for this, get a nice stout pair of pliers and hold the wire at the base. Do not bend against the wood because the wood won't be strong enough to resist the bending of the steel. So place your pliers right at the base of the wood and then bend your wires inwards so that they will end up being approximately the width of a body at the top where the points are. So you want to have the points spaced somewhere around 70 mil wide as a starting point and that will give you a nice tension against the body which can be adjusted later on. So once you've bent all your wires inwards so they're roughly 70 mil spaced or maybe wider if you're doing 24th scale then you want to turn your attentions to bending them so that they run parallel to the wood and again place your pliers at the base of the wood and then just bend the bars so that they look nice from the side as well. And you should end up with something looking just like this. So this stand could be used to hold any body you like just by bending the wires into position to suit each body that you're painting. Just remember to hold the base of the wire with a stout pair of pliers and don't twist against the pressure of the wood because I don't think the wood would be able to resist the bending forces of the wire. So as long as you use a nice strong pair of pliers you'll be able to bend these wires into any position you want and change the tension of the wire on the body. Obviously the further spaced you have the wire at the top the stronger the wires will hold the body and the closer together the points are the weaker it'll hold the body. I wouldn't recommend having it too strong because it could cause problems. So there we are, super simple to make. You can make them with hand tools and if you've got a bit of scrap kicking around in your workshop, they'll cost you absolutely nothing. And it took me about half an hour to make two of them. So for half an hour's time, bit of scrap material, I've now got a solution that if you went to somebody like Tamiar, it cost you 40 pounds for that. This costs nothing. So I really hope that this has helped many of you out there and maybe you'll have a go at making one and you can reap the rewards of what I discovered just a minute ago. So if you've enjoyed this content, maybe you'll subscribe and if you could hit the little bell button, that'd be awesome. So until the next time, thank you very much.